I can hear it. And then just swap the light with the opposition. Come on, sir! 2 fellow teenagers on the right hand side. It's Matt Hills on the ball now. He's looked to find Travis White in the box nice and early. No longer a teenager, but it's fallen into the arms of Brooklyn Brown. I'm joined by Rangai Media CEO and Gisborne Thistle President, Shannon Dowson. Good yes. morning. Good morning, Ryan. Yep, still El Presidente. This auspicious 100th year. Uh, good to have my crew back on board. We've got um, our first home game, so... 
finally getting to film one instead of using those little green aliens up there. And if you tuned in last week, you would have seen the footage coming out of the green aliens. It wasn't um, something to remember fondly, but it's not something we'll forget. So point to prove today for Tam Kramer's Jags. Looks like they've set up a little bit different, but more uh, numbers at the back and also a couple of new signings or a couple of three new signings. You've got uh, number eight of the left centre back of the three there is David Lava. Joined by on the far side number obscured at the moment. But it's number 14, which would be Samson Hotass. And the other one on the bench would be Kenny Sovoy, who you'll see at some stage over the day. Still waiting for the signing of Junior Jimmy to come through, who's the, the one to watch out for. So something to look forward to in a fortnight when the Jags play next. So Manderson coming around the left using Hot Ass. He's managed to wriggle away. He's a futsal player of some repute back in Vanuatu. And you hear a little bit more crowd noise than usual today. As, as what happens when uh, members from other countries. As McDermott's here into the box. Nearly wanted a good save from Armstrong. Could be forgiven for the thinking that's Nathan Cooksley out there on the right hand side for Palmerston North United. Formerly known as Palmerston North End. I borrowed the coaches and uh, maybe one or two players from Massey University, usually a goalkeeper. In the way, it's Craven who's gone to put through. Looks like Benjamin Morey. Armstrong stood him up well and it's onto the top of the net. The roof of the net as opposed to the ceiling, which is normally called the roof, Shannon. Yeah, we've, I, I believe in, in past seasons we've uh, discussed the intricacies of the of net formation. Um, it's, it's important to know the differentiation though, like you don't want to be ignorant about these things. No, well that goal there is held together by some strapping tape as you can see, a little bit of a uh, whoops a daisy in the net set up this morning. Mm -hmm. Assistant referee Chris Nibbin not happy, and rightly so, so it's been strapped to the goal. It won't come down in a hurry. There's Venema and Manderson pursuing that one, trying to prevent Morty from another attempt at goal. I am uh, wondering why there's so much space out there with a five-man back line. Yeah. Well, as you know, when you, when you get a new partner, it takes a little while to get to know them. You've got your little intricacies and ins and outs and do's and don'ts, and they'll just be, for lack of a better term, feeling each other out in the early stages here. Plenty of noise coming out of the Palms North United team as well, led of course by Central Football Operations head, Rowdy Donny Piper. That's the uh, Japanese international out on the left hand wing, he's on the ball at the moment. And the 13 there, that's Mahiro Hada. Of course, Educated in Palms North at Palms North Boys High School, like most of the players. Not Oli Chichi, who's just played that one out to Riley on the left hand side there. And that one's gone past the outstretched head of Lava. But Dermot again is uh, not at the target. see but you just notice the movement there from Lava looking a little bit ginger just as if he's carrying something he's um he's not a spring chicken by any stretch of the imagination in his mid-30s but the man moves well and he is strong the other piece of trivia here is it's it's potentially his only game for Thistle he's due to uh, head back to Vanuatu next week along with Sovoi Hotas and Jimmy will be here for the long haul at least the season. It's hot us now on the ball and he's given that one away and done enough to get a little bite on it defensively. And referee Russell Jones, for those of Wu-Tang Clan persuasion, not ODB, but uh, sometimes a bit of an ODB, finding the free kick there for Thistle. Tell us about the centenary celebrations, Shannon. Did everyone have some lemonades with each other and do some hugging? 
Yeah, there was um, there was a fair amount of uh, of orange cordial drunk. Um, I think there was I think there was a good hundred and fifty odd at the on, on the first evening, and then a, and then a full house on the at the uh, dinner on the, the Saturday night. Good turnout for all the games, of course. We did play a lot of uh, uh, inter-club football in the day. Well, it would have been nice to have had a uh, Federation Cup fixture at Childers Road Reserve, wouldn't it? But um, certain club didn't want to come to the party. No yeah. pun intended, but pun intended. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be like they've done it before or anything, right? Like, coming to the party. Yeah, not even coming to the game. Last year, of course, Palms and North United were poised to win the league triumphantly. Three fixtures to play, two of them against Thistle, who were the cellar dwellers. And um, speaking of parties, Thistle went down there and spoiled that one on that occasion, coming away with the victory at Memorial Park. And then uh, Palms and North United, of course, choosing not to make the return trip. So the locals of Gisborne didn't get to take in a match that they would have been looking forward to. Mm. Would have That's been right. somewhat a farewell party for Oscar Smith, who's of course in Australia at the moment, on the beach sprinting circuit. And I just want to say that's an excellent non-call from Russell Jones there. Yeah, because I, I agree. As nobody knows, the rules for a foul throw, the only thing that has to do, your feet need to be on the ground, mostly off the pitch, or at least not entirely on the pitch, the ball needs to go behind your head and finish above. That's the only rules. It doesn't matter if it looks weird. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the ugly throw. I think they should be. I think they should be appreciated. Encouraged, even points yeah. for a throw, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. There's certainly no advantage in. Um, and looking terrible when you throw a ball. Absolutely not. There's no advantage in looking terrible at all, really, unless I suppose you're trying to make people stay away from you. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're trying to be found unassuming or potentially like a, in the spy game, you probably don't want to, you don't want to be too appealing at that stage, you know, you want to blend in. Sometimes North United on the attack here through Riley. Hills has got the touch in. It'll be first corner of the match, at least on this side of the field, for Palms and North United. Now, our cameraman, um, uh, Nathan Mihaka, he is a, um, he's a, he's an avid fan of uh, war films and uh and memorabilia so i'm sure he would have a lot of input on the on, on what it would take to classify as a spy in the in the modern day corner from chichi it's met at the near post but sent over the bar looks like benjamin mori on that occasion i thought you were going to tell us that nathan mihak is a spy and i was going to say not anymore yeah I, too. I see him a little too often for him to be a spy. I think um, he, he turns up to class and such. He doesn't really, he doesn't go on unexpected um, international travel. Um, maybe you know, maybe there's something going on at Manatuki. But do you have a spy base at Manatuki, Nathan? Hmm. Sometimes they're hiding in plain sight, like Transformers. They're actually all around you. You just don't know. Ah. Ah. Here's Bailey Brown, Brooklyn Brown, sorry, on the ball now. Keeper of some reputies. Come through the Palms North Boys High School system to be signed by Stopout in the Central League for last season. He was actually signed for Stopout to play in their playoffs the season before, which is um, quite something for a teenager. And then signed by Wellington Olympic for their National League phase last season and somehow he's ended up in Palmerston North. His, his grandmother's here today and she made that very clear during their three hour warm up before the game. 
I'm not sure if she'll be taking in the live stream from 20 metres to our left, but there's her grandson on the ball and starting the next attack for Palmerston North United. There's Maury now underneath as McDermott looks for the through ball. Ziggy West Hill's in a good position, and Ziggy West Hill has been incredibly impressive in his fledging Thistle career so far. McDermott again now showing those fancy feet. Little leg goes in from Avni, but to his credit, he held his feet. It's West Hill winning the ball off Maury again. Hill's showing some good control to uh, beat two defenders inside out. Unfortunately, comes to nothing down the right hand side for Thistle. Jacob Riley, the Palms North United left sided player, just having a whinge trying to uh, say that the teenage Matt Hills is beating him up. Which is not something that Hills likes to do. He's a lovely guy. Craven does well to try and keep that one in, mm. but the flag's gone up on the far side. Yeah, I prefer a physical game anyway. I would like to see players defending the ball like that and taking space. Um, just because you get a little uh, love tap from time to time doesn't mean it needs to be a whistle. We're not suggesting for a second that Hills took a swipe at him. No, no, no. I'm suggesting that you should be able to defend the ball like that. It's a, uh, he made himself big. He didn't, didn't have his elbows out. Armstrong getting out well to set that one. He's been given it back by West Hill and he probably didn't want it there, Armstrong, but he's done well to wriggle out of that situation as Hotas spins Craven and then gets a little bunt of his own and credit where credit's due. There's no whistle on that occasion either, which, again, we're probably happy to see. There's Cudby now at the back for, I was about to say, Wanganui Athletic, but that was last season, the, the Hawara native. Prodigy coming out of Harwara, you could say. And Palmerston North United are missing another, what do you call it, a Hawarian? A Hawarian? What's a person from Hawarian called? Oh. Right, should we get that in the chat? You could look at the chat. I'm going to call that it's a Hawarian. A Hawarian? Like the dogs, you yeah, know, yeah, the yeah. Pomeranian. Yep. Yeah, Similar that. characteristics. Mm. And uh, anyway, William von Kirsten's missing today, the former New Plymouth Rangers player. The right intention there from Hotas, but still just like we said earlier, feeling each other out, the new recruits. It's a fine ball from Chechi there, and Maury's in a dangerous position. He's been tracked by West Hill, who's gone around Armstrong, I say, with the legs, and a good clearance from Corey Thompson in a Strong defensive position there, the holding midfielder. Hills has got around another one. That's Daniel McDougall that time. But again, no product up front for Thistle, who remiss of me to not mention so far, but missing Jimmy Summerton today, who is also in Australia, might be visiting Smith. Here's Hotas on the left-hand side while we're rabbiting on about that. Just waiting for some recruits to come, and it's a good ball over to Travis White on the far side, who takes it down, but... Francis Toombs is oh, managed to give him a challenge. I'm glad uh, that, was a, that was a really well weighted ball and a held run that uh, I think he could have he could have done a lot worse. He could have run straight into trouble there. But Would have liked to have seen a, a strike first time perhaps, but indeed what a ball from Hotas there. He's got magic in those feet. Mm. Look for Lava, the big rig, to get his head on the end of this. It's a good ball from Travis White. It's West Hill at the far post and a good punch and it's a rocket off the boot of Hotas. Great intent. Brings the crowd into play here at Childers Road Reserve and it's a really good response so far from the Jags after last week. Good to see what's on offer from the new signing. Special thanks to Kai Pony Farm and Jules Hansen out there, the welfare manager for their RSE workers making sure that the boys were available to play today. Just a shame we didn't manage to get the last button pressed on the ITC process for his mate Junior Jimmy out of North Efate United. So close, but so far. You can feel the Jags coming into the game now. 
a bit more chat coming up, a bit more belief in the crew. Here's Chechi receiving it on the left-hand side. He's got Hutter in the middle, who's accosted by Travis White. Apprentice diesel mechanic, of course, Travis White. Doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. Here's Chechi deep and in space. He's released McDermott on the right-hand side. They're going to need to track here. He's taking as close as he can to goal, and a great little challenge there from Caden Manderson. Good spirit in the Jags, good to see. They've had to deal with that, uh, that run down the right a few times now. I'm not sure what they're going to change there to shore things up. It's always been a bit of a trap here at Childers Road Reserve. It's a, it's a massive pitch. And what often happens to Gisborne Thistle teams when they travel is they feel like they're lethargic getting off the bus or the plane or whatever means of transport they've had to take lately. But it's really that the pitches are smaller everywhere else. We're playing on a rugby field here, so... The advantage is, is if you've got pace and legs and all that kind of uh, trait, it's obviously going to serve you well. It's that low corner at the near post that almost sneaks in. It's a dangerous one here for McDermott, who's had an attempted pole drive, but it's more of a, I don't know what you'd call that. Anyway, there's more space here at Childers Road Reserve. That's, that's what happens. And if opposition teams are onto it, it's not going to take them long to exploit that. Mm. Yeah, they certainly look like they certainly look like they've got the pace to get in behind us today really easily. Um, I think it's a you know, matter of finding your defensive space, right? And giving yourself the room to track that player. Ambitious ball there from Lava looking for Hotas on the left hand side. Just on the wrong side of him unfortunately. This could be in tombs working out from the back. Anthony now for Thistle Hills will look to keep this one in. As Kisborne Thistle youth team coaching extraordinaire, the man behind all these teenagers appearing on the pitch at the moment, Matt the Asset Harvey. Matt Harvey, how are you, mate? Very well, thanks. This is cool. Oh, it's no more. Yeah. No more. You tell us, Matt, you're the one in commentary now. <laughs> <laughs> Expecting big things today from the youth, Matthew? Um, hopefully consolidate on what we did uh, two weeks ago. Give the viewers an update. How have the boys been going? Really well. Been training well, a lot of enthusiasm. Impressive um, first win, of course, against Wainui Sharks, who were one of the powerhouses of the local competition last season. It was a sort of 4 1 victory, was it, in, in week one? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sharks are a, a different side than they were last year, um, but um, they, uh, the boys did really, really well. I was really pleased with the performance. And a screamer, of course, from Thistle head coach Tam Kramer's son, Ewan. Oh, yes. Been the highlight of the fixture, of course. Yes, the fourth goal was something to behold. Um, uh, I believe it's been caught on social media and it's been doing the rounds. Hasn't quite gone viral yet, but um, uh, Ewan's doing his best to make that happen. Farrow and Fourth Thistle on the right hand side now in the hands of Shai Avni, a former, well, a, a graduate of the. Uh, Matt Harvey School of Football, of course, as that one's bundled out by Toombs. Players to watch out for this season, Matt? New faces in the youth team? David Ewer. Uh, David Ewer, of, of course, uh, a, a key feature for the youth B team, which um, is something that speaks for itself, really, that there's a youth A team and a youth B team now. I believe they're called one and two. 1.0 and 2.0, to be specific. His hills can't quite catch up with that one to get something into the box for Thistle. Mm, to answer your question, uh, probably uh, look out for Connor Everson, who's um, having cameo roles with the first team at the moment. He's really come on in the summer. Uh, 
centre back pairing of um, obviously with the um, retirement of the stalwart um, Shannon Dowsing, um, the centre back pairing of uh, Dan Walters and Max Kume um, is something to uh, something to keep an eye on. Uh, young Gavin Durr and young Charlie Harvey, and obviously. Uh, the son of the first team coach Ewan Kramer. Some of the other other names to look out for are uh, veterans of the of last year's reserve team. Uh, they include Xavier Takani Brown. Um, Would you like me to bring up your team sheet there, Matt? <laughs> yeah, no, just on. keep an eye on all of them. They're, 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 they're <laughs> There's Hotas now, Professor, and just couldn't quite get the angle on the ball through for Travis White, but seemed to be meandering for a, for a moment there, not only in the commentary box, we'd call it, but there is no box, but also on the pitch, and things are just reached a little bit of a flash point in the middle there, as the teams realise they're still playing. Love has really ranged forward from centre back there to make that challenge, and he's now making his way back into that three. The middle stages of the first half here, and it's a it's a performance that Thistle can be quite proud of at, at this stage. The ball's given away, but need to recover here. Is Manderson looking to track McDermott? Cuts inside again onto the left foot, and it's a good block from Daniel Venema. Senior player on the field today, Venema. Possibly the eldest uh, side of lava by around 10 years for either side as well. Here's McVeigh, a welcome addition back to the Jags this season. The police constable in Rua Toria. Thompson with a bit of pressure on McDougall there and it's Cudby now who's got hot house to deal with. He'll be just taking a bit of time to get used to the difference between playing on grass and playing on the sometimes astroturf, sometimes poolastic, and sometimes hard wood of the futsal courts of Vanuatu. Who's your fixture today, Matt? Who's your youth guard in their fixture today? Oh, playing um, Shockers Gold yeah. over, over on um, Childers Road. On number two? Number two, yes, um, right after this game. Oh well, you've been, you've been relegated to the uh, to the second pitch, so the Vintage and the Cats can play on number one. Yes, uh, and, 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 and rightly so too, to, to the two um, up-and-coming teams of the uh, second division. <laughs> Shockers Gold, of course, also known as Gisborne Thistle Old Boys, with a number of players from seasons past. Captain from season past in Ryan Anderson, applying his trade in Eastern League Division 1 now, as well as Cullen Sporforth and Ashley McMillan. There's Lover getting a good touch in there for Armstrong to clear. Hotas in a little bit of space if he can turn Craven here. We'll see what skills might be on display. Goes for safety there with Manderson at his rear. It's Lover now, he'll give that one back, and Manderson just caught flat footed for a moment there before he could release and play away. Craven with the throw now. More in the middle, and that's Hada for Chichi. Chichi often referred to as Siki, but of course in the Italian alphabet, the character's identical, so the pronunciation's identical. There's Avni underneath the bouncing ball here. Riley's won that one between hills and Avni's taken the slide and he's kicked in the back of the head, but he's apologetic to his credit. Friendly fire, of course, but foul nonetheless. It looks like a hockey-style short corner here to Palmerston North United. We're we playing five at the back. We are. Well, is it three, is it five? It's five defensively. And there's even more of the impressive physical specimens of the Vanuatu Supporters Club turning up. We've got a faction to the left and right of us. 
and you just know if you put some boots on these guys' feet, they're going to have a lot to offer football in the region. So really good to see these guys here today. To be fair, a lot of them look a little bit old for the uh, youth team. Just because they can grow a beard in your young clothes can't, mate. It's a, I don't think it's an indication of age. Well, they say you're old enough, you're good enough, and if you're good enough, you're young enough. Direct quote from Tim Ream from Premier League Stories this morning, actually, that one. Tell us that you're trying to convince yourself you're still a Premier League footballer without saying you're trying to convince yourself you're still a Premier League footballer. Which he obviously is. There's Tombs now. Yeah, I'd be quite convinced I was as long as I had a contract. I don't think it'd... Uh... What a nice feat there from the Vanuatu and Vanuashin. And McVeigh, a drive from distance. Really good stuff here from Thistle, staking their claim and entertaining the crowd. Just again, the addition of those boys from the Pacific Islands just brings that little bit of spark that we often we don't lack, but maybe don't have in the local game. And you can just wait for Junior Jimmy to join them on the pitch, and then our Jimmy Summerton, of course. And you can start to think that this Thistle side might have something to say as the season develops. Height on the ball from White there and Hills doesn't meet it with the ferocity that he may have wanted to. Yeah, I think ultimately uh, some of these players are young enough that, uh, that a few months makes a difference. Not just a, uh, not a few seasons. Indeed, if you quick, quick count, you've got one, two, three, four, five teenagers on the pitch today in the starting 11 for Thistle. And indeed, every moment of their young lives is of greater significance because there's less to compare it to. As that one runs away from Dylan Barry, speaking of experience, that's a former professional footballer in the 12 there for Palmerston North United. He spent some time in the Spanish third division. And he was also a trialist at Levante for the students of the game. So watch out for the 12. He didn't manage to crack the Palms North Maris first team last season, other than a couple of occasions off the bench. But uh, he's got pedigree in the game, the 12. So keep your eye on him. And here he is on the ball now. Under the watchful eye of Ziggy West Hill. Here's Hills with a clearance of experience there. Chechi now, another man, former Auckland City player, former New Zealand Youth International. There's some pedigree in this Palmerston North United side, which, side of a couple nervy moments at the start, this will have really held their own with and almost dictated play at times. And here they go again through Hotas on the left, and he's stopped in his tracks that time by McDougall. system that seems to be working well for Thistle so far today. Curtis White, a couple of smart moves there. Just, um, when we lost the ball up front, he, he gambled on chasing the back pass to keeper. Oh, and that's Hothaus blocked on the left-hand side of the area. Getting a free kick in a dangerous position. You look for White and McVeigh to stand over this and have a little... Uh, Chelsea-esque argue over who might be taking it. Who's your money on, Matt? Four. For, to take this free kick? Oh, uh, I'd say... Uh, oh, it looks, looks, like, looks like Travis. Looks like Matt Bay is... Uh, well, maybe the number eight for Black. <laughs> yeah, all right. Matt, Matt McVeigh's foreheads looking, looking pretty good for this one. As if Ryan <laughs> wants to have further conversation on that. It's a lovely forehead and I like it just the way it is. Here's White standing over the free kick. Looks for a little awkward bending one and that's Lava putting some attention on Brown. Who's showed good strength from 
Palmerston North United zone teenager and a nice clearance there that's dealt with by Avni, but it's the seconds that are going to cause the problem here. Riley with the ball at his feet. Chichi now. Great little through ball there for Hudder. And Armstrong is off his line well to prevent the Japanese from getting on the end of that. Here's Lover, composed and back to Armstrong, who's put the up and under through for Manderson there, who loses it in the overcast skies here today. Craven with the throw on the right-hand side for Palmerston North EU United. Mori now, that one's gone out of play, so it's Manderson who will have the throw and oh, then the quick go. restart prevented the by card, the experience of Joseph Craven who's earned himself a $25 fine. That's it. Is that a yellow card or a lime green card from Russell Jones there? Well, it can't be dissent. Oh no, there's no literal green card, but oh, uh, just the, the, the shade of the, of the card itself was luminescent. Mm. And he's got what he wanted anyway by paying the fee, Craven. He's, he's slowed down the restart, so Manson unable to release Hotas with a quick throw. And it's fallen back at the feet of Morty. Well, that's the former pro, Barry, who's uh, let that one go across the face of goal there. Armstrong did enough to make a nuisance of himself and mm. make it a difficult attempted finish, if nothing less. Yeah, you've got to credit the goalkeeper with that one. Yeah, it looked like he uh, He's definitely... ass assumed it wasn't going to make it to his boot for a moment there. So Armstrong now, of course, making the big switch from Campion College to Boys High School to further his footballing progression. Chichi now with space in the middle, not something you want to afford that man. As West Hill with the defensive clearance is going to be at the feet of McDermott, but Manderson did well to recover. Here's Hotas now, the sliding challenge. Another raking challenge there, but Morty of course comes away with the ball again. Manderson getting stuck in there on multiple occasions. It's really good to see the energy here, and you can hear the delight and the thumping of the powerful thighs of Rango Media CEO Shannon Dowsing. <coughs> Harvey to his left just thanking his lucky stars that his own thighs weren't pounded by the man. Are we watching the same game? Uh oh. It's Chichi in the area and it's... It really isn't about what's going on on the pitch at the moment. It's oh, more about what's going found on there by <laughs> the, uh, the, the pounding of hot thighs is a... Uh, <laughs> so I can't quite get past them. Well, well Maestro of its head. At least one of us is watching the game. You'll see that it's a penalty for uh, Palmerston North United oh. visitors, and it didn't really look like they were going to score in any other way. To be fair, so sometimes it's nice to have uh, friends and friends in one. higher places. They haven't, they haven't scored this one yet either, right? Let's uh, give give Aiden all credit to do. Maury standing over it. And the funky legs couldn't stop that one. It's an eventual lead to Palms North United around about the 31st minute of the fixture, I'd guess. Did they start on time? They did not start on time, Matthew. Thank you for the Shitsumon. The uh, bit of a delay. Sorry, as we try and work our way through the crowd noise there. There's a Palms North United chant gone up to the delight of Mike Tallett, former Gisborne Girls High School relief coordinator, sitting there in his Kathmandu jacket. It's up and down. Again, it's time for Thistle to respond. They probably could have found themselves down, to be fair, like in terms of the, the run of the fixture, a number of chances for Palms North United, but none converted until that penalty. His Hills does well to spin Riley, and like he's got away from him there as he ranges inside into an amount of space at that far post. Manderson coming forward to 
Receive the eventual pass, you could call it. Hothas pumps one into the head of Chechi. And it's wound up with Cudby at the back there. Lava now. Tight little touch there from Hills, and it's White who's into the area, but the back heel didn't find its intended target. For Toombs to shield that one out. It's Hunter under attention from White as well to win the challenge. I don't mind that cute football, but I'd like to see it. Uh... I'd like to see a shot get away instead of a, a back heel go astray. It's a great ball from Hutter for McDermott on the left hand side. It's gone across the face of goal. Armstrong's going to need to be brave here and he's swung the legs rather than the hands. And that's a second one for United. Benjamin Mori, the opportunist at the far post there. And we speak about responses and Thistle have given themselves another opportunity to do so now. Just that willingness to uh, put your head in dark places that's required on occasions and that, that's something that comes with experience and it comes with development and that's the situation here at Jules Road Reserve today. So Fissel after holding on for half an hour plus here at Childers Road Reserve now find themselves two goals down and in need of a response. There's been opportunities at both ends, there's been some good strikes from Hotas as well as Hills. Yeah, I do believe we've got a, a, a good scoreboard error going on over the far side there. Yeah. Hopefully not a uh, no, forecast so. in any sense from young Boyan. Here's Craven looking to the area and they're just going to put everything on Armstrong now. It's a good block from Hills. Good strike from Barry there. Again shows that pedigree from the professional game. Anthony's just under hit that one. Here's Maury now. McDermott free on the edge of the box. Minima recovers to retain position. For Manderson and now Hotas. Lava now. McVay settling things and keeping it with his experience. Centre back who's given up possession there and hasn't quite got the challenge. It's in the arms of Armstrong. He's going to go long. Not too many options afforded to him on that occasion and. Travis White needs to make his way around the dual VO cameras on the sideline there. Request a juggle out of Riley and it's Maury again in space in the middle. <clears throat> Ping and you just keeping the ball now. Looking to see the fixture through to half time. Tombs and Cudby. It's Craven, the man on the yellow. Probably not too much to worry about now in terms of watching his challenges as McDermott looks to take a strike from distance. So unfortunately that penalty is seems to have been just the turning point of the fixture. There was some belief growing in Electronet, Gisborne, Thistle, and again, some learnings to come from the youth on how to just shut up shop after that first goal. It's Brown now, it goes long, looking for Maury. It's Lava beneath that one, and Hotas, who looks to add a bit of pace to the play there. Riley getting another one over Hills. And again, Chichi in space at the base of midfield. 
It's Manderson almost on the wrong side of Mori. Another good call from Jones there, just because it hits his arm, it doesn't mean that it's a handball. Unless, of course, the next thing that happens is the ball goes in the goal, Shannon and Matthew. Did you know that? I did not know that. We should also clarify it from an attacking player, the latest change to the laws of the game. That it's no longer, like, you can have an accidental handball in the run-up to a goal. No, that's the only occasion that you can't have an okay. accidental handball effectively. Okay. Of course, the challenge is trying to figure out whether people are dirty cheats and they're trying to handball. But um, you'd probably say nine times out of ten, it's it's pretty obvious. But 19 times out of ten, we've all got in this disgusting habit of yelling handball whenever it touches somebody's arm. Tidy touch there from Barry. Is it Barry or perhaps it's Buddy? Travis White is about three metres offside there and the, the flag goes up from Williamson. Of course, instructed to hold that flag until the player actually receives the ball or directly affects play. So a good call from the linesman. Assistant referee, I should say, in this day and age. Apologies to the referee and fraternity for any offence caused. I think you'll be fine as long as you don't start talking about how strong his thighs are. Just a thigh review on number five for Palmerston North United there, of course, Francis Toombs, sitting at 220 kgs on the leg press down there at City Fitness in Palmerston North on Rangitike Street. It's a fortunate non-touch there for McDermott, which has led to an attack that's been cut out by Ziggy West Hill. It's fair to say it wouldn't be pressing one, well, wouldn't be pressing 220, let alone 120 on that leg press. He's just a young buck. Plenty of time to grow the thighs. <coughs> Who's your favorite set of thighs, Shannon? My favorite set of thighs. Wow. Um, I, I can't say that I've um, that I, that I run a thigh rating system. Um, I can certainly tell you I prefer KFC to chicken. Well, I'll tell you one thing now, Shannon. Chick King contributes a lot more to the local community than that Kentucky Fried Chicken. I've never seen KFC sponsoring any local sporting codes, so you'll take that back. <laughs> Who's uh, who's chicken sponsoring? Chick King sponsors the high school old boys presidents and the oh, Poverty Bay Cricket Association Hope Cup. But the owner of Chick King, this is oh. nice little bit of skill there from Hothouse, who's not received the free kick, and that'll upset him. Hopefully, he doesn't retreat into his shell. The owner of the Chick King here in Tuanganui Akiwa is none other than Baljeet Singh, the owner of Bollywood Stars Indian Tandoori Restaurant. There you go. There is so much more um, depth to chicken than I, uh, than I knew. Hey, if you're looking for depth, look no further than the company on the front of the Gizmo Fossil shirts this season, Electronet. If anyone's holding this community together, it's them. Multitude of services offered, running from water to electricity and everything in between. Probably not somewhere you want to be, between water and electricity. Well, they take that risk for us. Mm. Challenge coming in from Travis White there, but Hudder runs through it. There's McDermott, a nice turn and a good strike to the far post. That Nathan Cooksley wig that he's wearing today really is giving him the power of the dreads. News just in, Miles Russell, who at 15 years old has become the youngest player to make the cut in the 35-year history, 35 year history of the Corn Ferry Tour. Speaking of thighs. The Corn Ferry Tour. What is... Is that golf? That is indeed golf. That's the uh, second grade of the PGA Tour as we reach half-time here at Children's Road Reserve. It's Electronet Gisborne Thistle 0 
and Palmerston North United 2. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you in the same place in around 13 minutes and 40 seconds. This is Ruth. Ruth and I both played football here in the old days. <laughs> I was 70s, she was 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Was it on? Yeah. Yeah, oh, thank you. Um, we'll see you soon. Um, okay. Hurry up. We're saying hello to my daughter in law, Tony's wife. This is another sister. This, this one's Gracie, she's the baby. That's Wendy. And here comes Polly, who looks the most like me. It's Wendy, my daughter. She's in Palmy North. Oh, she's here. Yeah. Hi, Wendy! Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Supporting Brooklyn. Yes, we're supporting Brooklyn. We're going to the bar. Okay, <laughs> her. Mischief. Yeah, thanks, Dan. See ya. Hello, Hunter.
Right, welcome back. Apologies, that was uh, 14 minutes and 12 seconds as opposed to 13 and 28. But uh, here's your electronic Gisborne Thistle. Now playing from right to left, which is a pretty cool trick. And Spumps North and Ride just getting into position now. We'll probably offer it back the other way. So what we're going to do this half is just uh, keep giving the ball to each other in rapid succession and make it as difficult as possible to tell you what's happening on the pitch. That's a great challenge, strong challenge from Samson Hotas, who has lit up that left-hand pocket in the first half. Number of powerful strikes on goal and excellent additions in terms of his passing array. His lover at the back now. Slowing things down for Manderson, and we can pin that one on the sandpit for Craven to take the throw. Just noticed Kale Strauman down there who rejected chips and he's gone for the sausage roll by the looks of it. The ball's squared, it's Maury at the fast stick, but blazes that one over the bar. Into the neatly trimmed hedge, thanks to Recreational Services Limited for making things a lot easier. Maybe a lot less lost children and tents and umbrellas in there this season. Shannon, have you awoken from your half-time nap yet? I am back, yes, I am back. I was, uh, I was actually deep in consideration of whether a pie is an option as a first choice or whether you always go chips and then the pie is additional, like if you need a, a, a fuller meal. Um, you, you called it a sausage roll, but obviously you're wrong. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what's wrong with you there. Well, what's wrong with me is that there's a blue bar that runs across the <laughs> top of the grandstand railing, and uh, from my point of vision, I can only see the hand to the mouth. Okay. So he could be eating a cupcake for all I know. He could. Just went for sausage roll. Falls into the area, McDermott gets the hit on, it's a cruel deflection mm. off Hotas there, who doesn't deserve that, making a third goal for Palms North United, not long after the recommencement of play. She's a cruel mistress football, Thistle conceding three goals that they probably didn't deserve to, and... Palms North United not taking the chances that they probably should. So, by the run of the game, you'd probably hand it to Palms North United at the moment and saying they definitely oh. deserve to lead. Their scoreboard's back with a digital error this time. <laughs> what you're actually looking at is the scoreboard in a mirror. So it's all about perspective. And it will be rectified, it, it will have been spotted by Gisborne Thistle Director of Football, or is it Football Director, Lee Smith. Here's Hotas going to look to turn Craven inside out here, which he does, and then he's shoved. Craven wants to be careful, he's on a yellow, and to be fair, Russell the Muscle Love Jones just uh, might be owing Gisborne Thistle a little something for the penalty upon the review at half time course vantage point excluded looked like there may have not been a whole lot in it here's Chechi now thwarted by the Thistle defence Chechi for Craven he's looking far post for what he might have thought was Nathan Cooksley but it's definitely not Tidy feet from McDermott looking to exchange with Maury there, and it's Hudder who's come away with it. Hudder now on the ball, nice little slip there for Maury who squares it. It's a great save, but an offside flag from Williamson who just wants to keep that up. West Hill looking to play fast here, he has Avni outside him. Just a little rush there, trying to release Hills down that right-hand side for Electronet Gisborne Thistle. Cudby at the back now for PNU. Brown spots Riley well. Brings that one under control and has Maury underneath. 
It's a challenge for Venema to make now, and it's Hutter who's got through, and it's a good save with the legs from Armstrong. And sending that one over the bar. We really need to be slowing that down and getting closer to the man. The, uh, the defence is giving way too much time to pick a pass. Yeah, again, we're at second half now, so it's a feeling out period. Just trying to figure out each other's body position in the match. Of course, seated very near to us is the man who started at centre back last week for Gisborne Thistle, Nicholas Land, who, had he been on the pitch, would have turned that one around to a glorious 3 2 victory, but you can't have everything you want. It's McDermott from distance looking for that top corner. I want to say the scoreboard is maybe intentional. It's a, it's a backwards three of defiance. Sort of saying, you can have it, but we're not going to let you look at it, you know? Yeah. I'm less convinced. His Armstrong looked like he was going to go long with the goal kick, but he's put West Hill under a little bit of heat here. He's done well to wriggle around two Palms North United defenders and release Travis White in the middle. He had a bit of space and he's on the correct side here and has a go from distance into the midriff of Tombs. So again, Thistle, they've got those little sparks. There's something going on in this Gisborne Thistle side. It's just a matter of getting that first leg up that they need. There's Hotas feeling for Craven. And a lovely pair of boots sponsored by David Sampson. Sam, I should say rather. David Sampson, of course, former Waikato United, Melville and Hamilton Wanderers player. They attempted on a quick one there while the keeper's setting up, but too late. It's McVeigh standing over this one. Piper on the bench for PNU sensing the threat. It's gone to the far stick to West Hill. He hasn't quite grown into his frame yet, and nor would you expect him to, but he's very good in the air for such a young man. Spotas again under attention from Craven. And he'll he'll invite the challenges. And he's been and cut late. down again, and that's a man that's on a yellow card who would be very fortunate to stay on the pitch here because that is deliberately preventing any further involvement from the attacker. And he's a very lucky man to still be on the pitch there, Craven, because you'd think if he wasn't already on a yellow, he'd be receiving one then. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a soft call there, to be perfectly honest. If he's got to go and talk about it, and he's on that yellow, he's already said it once. Hotas had him in stitches there, and it beaten them all ends up. Hopefully this will uh, receive some sort of universal reward from this one. It's a deep ball to the far post from White, and it's bounced in the area, which is an unusual decision from the Holmes North United defence. West Hill with his back to goal. Now McVeigh gets it back into the area and it's a good header clearance there from Craven. It's Manderson quick onto it. Hotas again, the danger man. Too well to just draw the foul. That's a great strike from Corey Thompson. Full stretch dive drawn from Brooklyn Brown. And again, Thistle really showing a good account of themselves here, I think, to be fair as Piper's read the room and realised that Craven's on thin ice, he's going to withdraw him. And it's going to be Thomas Bell that comes on, so... Potential restructure, although Bell looks like he's coming off for Hudda on the left-hand side. And heading across to right back will be Jackson Braun, who's been allowed to come along for the trip today. But... He's gone up front for Mori. It's, it's difficult to keep up here. It's a big shift. The triple substitution, which is effectively clearing the bench with the exception of Bei Shi, the Cambodian there. 
It's Anthony Jones going on as well. So for the viewers, Bell on the left-hand side is one to watch out for. He'd be the danger man for Palmerston North United. Interesting decision not to start, and perhaps he did something naughty during the week. Was punished. But we've got Ryan McDermott now on the right-hand side. Potentially looking at a right back as Chichi just roams around there to make things difficult to read. And some reshuffle that's just taken place there. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure uh, who's fallen into what position. Seems like they've gone for a more aggressive um, formation, but. Well, excuse the turn of phrase, but it's really just a dick swinging contest in Palmerston North this season between Palmerston North United and Palmerston North Marist after the ding dong battle last season, which resulted in Palmerston North United losing to Thistle at home and then giving up on the remainder of their season. And Marist getting their uh, rear ends handed to them on a plate in the playoff. But with the Central League 2 coming in next season, both teams will know that both of these teams will be playing at what you would have to admit is a higher level next year. Spell just steps over that one and Manderson's there to clear. Venema puts the boot in, which is great to see, especially with none other than JD Gilly sitting in front of us, who was a man who knew how to put the boot through the ball. So Manderson will look to get on the end of this one. It's produced a defensive flick. Lovers alert to. Plays under for Manderson, but can't quite wait the pass to keep the ball in play. Here's McDougall for Bron, who's looking to make his statement. I'm... Um I now know that your preference isn't for is, is certainly for thighs. You didn't mention how good a chest that was. So, well, thighs rhymes with eyes, and they're up here, Shannon. So <laughs> sometimes you've just got to be respectful. Oh no! It's Chichi with the go. Some loose hands from Armstrong there, who does well to keep his gloves intact from the raised boot from Thomas Bell. You can see the hunger in Bell there as Hills produces a good turn to hold on to possession. He's gone around the outside. And it's recovered by Daniel Dougal McDougal. For what's resulted in a Gisborne Thistle throw. for what's now resulted in a Palms North United throw. <laughs> and we weren't fortunate enough to be given three throws in a row, but uh, that's Anthony Jones looking to put his impact into the game there for Palms North United. Just looking to consolidate again. It's been a busy start to the second half here. Around about half an hour to play. Time for Thistle to get back into the game if they can just get that one in the net. And here's the man who it's looking like it'll come through. Just not on that occasion for Hotas. But Shannon, it's going to be exciting to see him and uh, Junior Jimmy working alongside Jimmy Summerton up front in weeks to come. Yeah, there's been some really good um, position played by both of our wingers today. They've um, they've held the ball and, and got that last touch pass there, man, consistently. Now, one of the intricacies of the centenary season here for Thistle is that all of the teams are playing in the same kit. So when that camera pans to the base of the screen, what you'll see is it looks like a myriad of substitutes available for Gisborne Thistle or perhaps supporters and supporters gear. That's the youth team lining up for their fixture, which is of course going to be on number two. 
after this. For those in the region that uh, wish to come down. I, um, I wonder who's got the away kit today for the uh, Bobcats vintage fixture. Do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if there's just a total oversight and both of them turn up in the full blue. I'd be entertained. And then you can just imagine that the rationale behind that would be, oh, we're here now, we may as well just play. I, w I would imagine it's more total stubbornness more than total oversight. <laughs> just two teams that are, that are going to completely refuse to uh, bend. It's actually looking like it could be a bit of a spicy encounter, isn't it, really? Because it, it's pretty much vintage versus vintage. Vintage old boys versus vintage, isn't mm, it, really? It is. There's, there's certainly a lot of players in, that, have, that have appeared in the uh, vintage squad in that Bobcat side. As the artist formerly known as Orr heads onto the field, he's now Bay She on the team list. And the number three there for Palmerston North United. Yet another substitution. There's Lava holding his shape and looking for some help from Anderson. To the middle there, that one's off the shoulder of Chichi. It's West Hill. Composed, making his way out of defence. Thistle have done well to hold on to it here. But then just spaded it away. So. McDougal now. There's Bron who's gone deep to get himself on the ball. Looks like Chichi's popped up at the far post. War now. This hot ass does well. He's only got the keeper and the defender in front of him. Holds it up and looks to slip Travis White, who's just not quite on the same wavelength there. He really is looking for Travis White to, to put all the speed in. Really break that line for him. And drop it down a gear, you say, head into second. He, he needed to. He needed to, um, to give those defenders something to think about instead of just standing off. Manderson, good challenge. Wins the ball aggressively there. Hot ass now. With the nutmeg for Travis White. Hill's showing a great turn of speed there to put some pressure on Riley. It's Bell there who's danced around him, and it's the foul from Hills, which is well spotted by referee Russell Jones. As we're still using that impressive leap of his. Cut that one out. It's the soundtrack. It starts to play in the grandstand. It's party time for the boys from Vanuatu. Armstrong does well to find Hotas, who retains position. Uses his body well to turn past two defenders and looks for White again up front. We're still good body position there, and Avni pumps that one out for a corner. Tired looking teams out there, to be fair, at this point in time. Of course, a multitude of fresh legs for Palms North United, having made four of their five substitutions. The fifth one is. And that's Wallace just been left to go. That one's bundled in directly from the corner for McDougall to get himself on the score sheet. Big red letdown there for the Gisborne Fizzle players. There's 
a muted grandstand and almost an apologetic lack of celebration from the number of Palmerston North United supporters here today. Almost as if everybody knows that that doesn't really deserve to be a goal. Oh no, I thought we had the four for a minute there, but we've gone. And all is offside there up the top and it's a premature celebration from Anthony Jones. But you don't need an excuse to give someone a cuddle, do you, Shannon? You don't. You don't. But I'm enjoying that. So, so we've had some confusion on the scoreboard. We've gone, we've gone plus one for the disallowed goal there. Um, so we've gone from Y to five. But wait, it's been spotted it's by been the spotted. attendant. It's a lover going high off the boot. I shouldn't. Um, I shouldn't come in, obviously we, we value our uh, volunteers. It is Palmerston of North United now, is there blood in the water? There we go. We have our four. Positives here. Again, I've been impressed with West Hill. Yeah. Such a young man, I believe he's not, not yet reached his 16th birthday. That one's run through to Armstrong. He's white now, there's back to goal and overpowered by Toombs on that occasion. It's a good touch from Jones, who's bundled it through the legs of Armstrong and that five could have stayed on the scoreboard. Anthony Jones, the latest to get on the score sheet there. So it's two tough ones on the trot for Thistle, but a week off next week and plenty of troops to come back. Next fixture you'll have Jimmy Summerton, David Simmon and Junior Jimmy onto the field. It'll be a rejuvenated side. And they'll be hosting newcomers to the league, FC Weston, who have made a fast start this season. Of course, today the had the bye, but a big win over Bring United, the locals, last week as Thomas Bell just creeps across the byline, and an even better win over last season Central League side Whanganui Athletic in the first round. And for the train spotters amongst you, you can curiously watch for the result between Palmerston North Marist and Whanganui Athletic today. Whanganui Athletic, of course, down at the bottom of the table with Gisborne Thistle after being relegated from Central League last season following their undefeated season, the one before in the Federation League. So it's all swings and roundabouts, Shannon. It is. I think it's... Um... I think it's significant that they're introducing the Central League 2 to create a, a, a higher level between the two uh, leagues, allowing teams to progress easier and not yo-yo up and down between the two. It's a very good shout. It'll be interesting to see as 
Potas is now on the attack here. It's a foot race between him and Chechi. Who did exceptionally well to recover and get the challenge in there. Just some heavy legs from Hotas, who's used to the significantly smaller and harder futsal field. And looks like he's given all he can today, Hotas, to the old hand of defeat raised. I don't mind seeing that when you've uh, when you've obviously put in a shift. There's all in the area now for Homes North United. Manderson's done well to jockey him. Turn comes in from Mori, who's got Venema having him attention. As Hotas looks to the bench to plead for that substitution. The man's done everything he can. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many coaches have told you to leave it all out there and, you know. There's a there's a strong bench behind you. <laughs> let's let's use it. And here's the other and debutante coming on today, Kenny Sovoy, looking to take the field on that right hand side. Good shift from Matt Hills today. Continues to impress in the blue shirt where he belongs. And Hotas looking to make way for Gavin Durr, but. Gisborne Thistle head coach Tam Kramer is probably keen to see the two Vanuatu boys work together up top there. So he's going to ask Kotas to stay on for just a little while longer. Had a long rest there of course so might be into it. Just keep the ball at the back here for a little while. Brian seems to have taken the Chichi roll, getting on the ball as much as possible. That's Riley out on the left hand side looking to get around Avni. McDougal now. Savoy cuts it out well and gets a big challenge in. Good strength there. That looks like Vintage might be wearing the home strip. Is Bourne Thistle director of football or is it football director Lee Smith? Looking like he's about to come on in the number nine up front for the Jags, but he's just warming up for his next game by leaning on the railings there. He's all underneath again. He's, he's found himself in a number of positions. Armstrong does well to hold his space. Anderson gets the toe. I, I've been told on good authority that Vintage's warm-up is, um, is specific to the team, and they, they choose to... Uh, save that warm-up to play the last 10 minutes of the game. Um, they're a 90-minute team, but they don't have, but, but, but they don't have the, the additional uh, stamina for warm-up. He's hot ass very deep and uh, very tired by the looks of it. Manderson puts a little bit of tricky spin on that one to keep it in for McVeigh. So this will get into the last sort of 10, 15 minutes of the fixture here. On that note, I'm going to head down and get changed for the vintage game. Thank you, Ryan. I haven't had to say too much today, just a little bit of, a little bit of thigh slapping, and it's been, uh, let's keep the conversation moving. Well, it's going to be a lot harder to talk about thighs when you're by yourself, but uh, sometimes those are the moments we cherish as Sovoy makes a tidy little turn, a pirouette on that far side, and Hotas is in position around the Palms North United area. It's McVeigh with the deflection, and it's Thompson in the area. Squares instead of hitting it, and McVeigh who has another go, and that's 
the third or fourth one that's cleared the crossbar for the Jags today and on another day with a little bit more luck it could have been a much different scoreline that they're looking at. Cadby keeps it for Toombs. McDougal now. And there's that ore popping up again. West Hill recovers well. He shows good pace and has his hands on his back, but not enough to bring the player to the ground. And you feel like Orr is sort of looking for an excuse there to uh, not have to apply the finish, which he doesn't need to. He's been good since he's come on. Here's what's us. Needs to go under there for Travis White, but just not enough on the ball. Savoy wears that one on the shoulder. Lover on hand that time to make the half clearance. It's only gone as far as Bell. We'll love her again. All right, because I'm an athlete, I'm going to go and get ready. Sports time. All the best for the warm up. Former councillor Shannon Dowson. Which and just leaves one man in a comment section as Orr has a go on the near post but doesn't find the net on that occasion. So we frantically search through the phone for a company via the YouTube app and find out who's tuning in today. Dougal in the middle, keeping that one for Bron. Cudby and now Mori, who's found himself, pop up at right back. A Gisborne Thistle throwing down the bottom left corner. Just scrolling through the comments section here. Good to see PK in action. Looks like Gizzy Hard's prediction is uh, somewhat accurate. You've got to wonder whether that's a member of a um, certain fraternity that doesn't wish to apply themselves on the pitch. Just here for a good time. Hey, and good on you if that's the case. Welcome to Glenn Jackson. Watching from Nui. It's got to be the first view ever from Nui for our Rangai Media broadcasts. Thanks to Lucas Cox there. Maybe. Uh, Working on vibes from his brother Mike last season. That's another one for um, North Maris there, and another one for Jones who looks to have got his head on it. Armstrong's stricken with an injury. Now it's your question, Max Hawkins. Yes, number 12, Dylan Barry or Barty, is it? Seriously, an ex pro. And we're up to date. So um, perhaps a time for questions from the field. What's it like there at Childers Road Reserve today? You didn't ask, but I'll tell you it's a little bit chilly. We've gone the track pant. A couple of light jerseys. One regular jersey probably would have done the trick. So this will still pumping away here. And 
Palms and North United looking to make a statement of their own. Now, if you're the type of person that likes to look at records and such, you'll be wanting to check out the for and against of Wainui Amata, and I believe it was the 2022 Central League, you want to say, but it could be 21, where they had a very tough season after gaining promotion. Here's Palms North United again on the prowl. That one's gone to Bell at the far stick and relentlessly punished away. Goals on the offing here. Couple of substitutions for Gisborne Thistle. That's Hotas who's done well today. Taking his leave, Durr going into the fixture for him and White coming off for Connor Everson. So it's more youth for Gisborne Thistle. Six teenagers on the pitch now. 15, 16, and no more than 17 years old. Corey Thompson might still just uh, creep into that category as well in the number 10 there for Thistle. And they really are all at senior Thistle. That's Orr who spurned that one from straight in front. Goal kick goes long for Armstrong. That's the sort of got. You won't say much more than 10 minutes to last here. Let's say referee Russell Jones will be looking to get this one over pretty quick. There's Bell at the far post. That's another one. They're coming thick and fast now. Somber mood here in the JD Gillies Grandstand at Childers Road Reserve. A little bit going on on the number two pitch as we just divert the eye for a moment. Between High school old boys champion and Gisborne United. So I've drawn matters to a close over there. And back on the number one pitch. So this will looking to take something from the game. Really challenging situation to be in. I mean things aren't going your way. McVeigh toiling hard in the middle and Chechi still trying to pull the strings. Armstrong with the goal kick there. Deer does well to keep that one in but there's a relentless Benjamin Morey in the middle. Of all, getting the challenge in there on the far side of the pitch. Love up. Look to have maybe left a mark on Chichi there, but to his credit, the English Italian. That's 
a relentless finish at the far post from Jones at the near post rather I should say but who's checking at this stage and so if you look at that first half hour from Thistle there and spirited effort until that moment when the penalty call was made and it's just probably one too many hits to take uh, for the bruised bodies and egos after last week and as we mentioned United will be really trying to make a point here so it's more of a competition between Palmas North United and Palmas North Marist at this stage you can hear from the chat on the sideline Coach Donald Piper asking for more. There's Thompson looking for some security in the sideline. Hot take here in the comment section from Max Hawkins. You do wonder if it's the same Thomas Bell and you do wonder if that's why he was benched because as you can see, he's a player of some repute. And probably fortunate for Gisborne Thistle that he hasn't been on the entire game. That one's a slip through for Bell and you think that Flag might go up from Williamson, but not on this occasion. <coughs> Armstrong, a curious attempt to release Durr on the left hand side. He's wriggled his way around his oven at the far post, looking to put some attention on Thomas Bell. Of Armstrong again this time Durr in a little bit more space he's taking the touch and looks to get around Maury but cannot on that occasion he's only bounced off him when making the challenge there's McVeigh now Guiding his pass to the feet of West Hill, who's now under pressure from Jones. That one stayed in, it's Sovoy's chance to make an impact of his own. So Sovoy and Lava are back to Vanuatu before the next fixture, so they won't get another chance this season, you wouldn't think, to put on the shirt for Thistle, and it's probably not a pleasant memory for them but you can't take away the experience that they've had. Opportunity here for Everson and Durr in particular to gain some minutes at the level. Love run to that one with a powerful header. He's got the touch on that one for a corner. And Palms North United now absolutely clearing the bench with Central Football Manawatu operations manager Matt Wallace looking to get into the fixture. Yet to be revealed who will be 
making way for him. Here's Iverson now, under attention from Cudby. He's just gone right through him there to win that ball. Thompson does well to hold his space and come away with it. Everson now getting wrestled by Mori, who's surely looked to have made a pass there. It's not a stage to be kicking the ball away. Yeah, fair point, Max, there in the comments about uh, Patrick Smither. Smither or Smither, I always forget, and apologies to the family. And maybe one of the non-travelling contingent, but uh, with the resources of having three clubs behind you, never too hard to get a squad to travel away. The end of proceedings here today for Electronic Gisborne Thistle and Palmerston North United. The scoreline progress from last week. Single digits on the scoreboard and uh, a week off next week to just regather. Look forward to the coverage in a fortnight's time here on Rangai Media. Thanks for those who stuck into the end. Hopefully you've been entertained and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.